Hello, today's lesson is on uh, naming compounds and formula writing. Uh, in this lesson, what I'm going to talk about is nomenclature. And nomenclature is the word that we use for naming compounds. So it's a systematic way of naming, sub same, uh, naming things. You might have heard this in uh, biology. Uh, but again, we use it in chemistry to systematically name compounds. Um, so we're going to talk about our binary ionic compounds, which means that we have two atoms in our system or in our compound. So two atoms are going to be in our compounds. Uh, it's going to be ionic, which means that we're going to have a metal and a nonmetal. And to be honest, more precisely, what we're going to have is a cation for the metal, right? Because it's going to turn into an ion. So that's your positive, your cation, and your anion for the nonmetal. Okay, and those are the two parts for every every ionic compound we have, whether it's binary or not. And then obviously this is the compound. Okay, so remember what we're doing here is we're going to take something like sodium, which is not a compound. Let's say we have sodium solid, just a chunk of solid, sodium solid substance. Okay, it's a solid. And we're going to react that with chlorine. And chlorine's a gas. I'm not going to put the little 2 down here. I know I'm supposed to, but I'm going to hold off and I'll talk more about what that 2 is later. Uh, but what I'm going to have is chlorine gas. Right, and chlorine gas has got that greenish kind of hue to it, so let's make it a little bit green. Okay, so that's our chlorine gas. All right, if I react these two together, what I'm going to end up with is sodium chloride, and this is going to be a solid. And this would be table salts. This would be little tiny cubes of salt. All right, so it's back to a solid state. So what we have here is an element, an element, and a compound. And remember, the compounds are completely different than the elements themselves. Okay, So what we're looking at here is naming and formula writing these compounds. So we're assuming that these things are already made. This has a certain number of protons and electrons. It loses an electron to become um, a positive sodium. So inside of this formula, what I have here, because this is an ionic compound, and how I know that is that there's a metal and a nonmetal. I right away think positive sodium chloride negative. And that's what's in this compound. Even though we don't write the charges, we're not writing positive and negative in here, you have to keep in mind that whenever we have an ionic compound, two elements together, in the met we have a metal and a nonmetal. One of them is positive, one of them is negative. We have an ionic compound. So for the ionic compounds, what we're going to do is we're just going to take the name of the cation and we just call it what it is. So the cation name is just what we call it would be sodium. And we would just add the word ion to it. What we do for the anion name is we go ahead and we change the name a little bit. And our name for the anion is going to have the IDE ending. So it goes from chlorine to chloride. And that's the chloride ion. And that's pretty important to recognize that ending there. Because if I said sodium chlorine, that would be this, sodium chlorine. Sodium metal, poisonous, chlorine gas, dangerous, will kill you. But if I say sodium chloride, then I'm talking about table salt, which is completely safe and harmless. Okay? Uh, obviously in small amounts. Large amounts can give you heart, you know, heart attacks and stuff. You can get hypertension and high blood pressure and stuff. But anyway, the point is that sodium and chlorine are different than sodium chloride. And that's what this is. Hopefully everybody knows that NaCl is sodium chloride. So we just join those two ion names together. Sodium chloride. Um, I'm spelling that completely wrong. I don't know why I'm too busy thinking about something else. Okay, so chloride is the name for this compound, sodium chloride. Okay, so first thing we need to do is we need to talk about the charges on the ions. Now we've already talked about the charges and the fact that everything in this group has a positive one, everything in this group has a positive two, Everything in this one, 3, 3 minus. We skip this group here because there's no charges on most of those. We'll talk about leads and tins a little bit later. So 3 minus, 2 minus, and, and 1 minus. And of course, don't forget the silver, zinc, and cadmium. Okay, so if you have your periodic tables and you have these numbered, it's going to come in handy as we start looking at naming ions. Uh, let's uh, go to this one here. So when we're talking about ionic charge, we're talking about the different types of ionic charge we have, there's going to be two broad categories. There's polyatomic ions, 
which you need to memorize. If you haven't started memorizing those, you really need to start doing that. Okay, so we have to memorize those polytomic ions. Uh, and poly just means more than two, or two or you know, more than two, or two or more. Uh, monatomic ions are ions that are just going to be consisted of one atom. So things like sodium, uh, calcium, two plus, doesn't matter what the charge is, it's just a single element in the formula. Fluoride, sulfide, these are all monatomic ions. Now they're going to fall into two categories, single charge ions, which would be these guys here. What that means is that you are never going to see these with any other charge but this. Sodium is always positive one, and how do you know that? Because you go back to the periodic table over here, everything in this group is going to be positive one. So potassium positive one, sodium positive, everything here is positive two. These are your single fixed charges. Fixed just means that they're single. They're, they're not going to change. There's, there's no multiple charges. Now why do I have to bring that up? Because when we look at the multiple charged ions, what we're going to do is we're going to have different types of charges. We can have iron 2 plus, we can have iron 3 plus. So what happens in these transition elements, these elements in the middle here, they can actually have multiple charges. So our irons, our cobalts, there's more than one charge for cobalt. There's more than one charge for nickel. There's more than one charge for chromium. Those are referred to as your multiple charge ions. Now you don't have to memorize them, so don't freak out. There's no memorization of these. I'm going to show you how you can figure out what that charge is. So how do you know if you're dealing with a nickel 2 plus or a nickel 3 plus? Or are you dealing with a copper 1 plus or a copper 2 plus? Because they can have different charges based on their electron arrangements. All right, so before we get into those, let's just quickly recap what we got here. All right, so if I'm looking at writing compound names and formulas, all I need to do is two things. One, I need to get this to work. Um, let's say that I have uh, iron, no, nah, not iron, it's good multiple charge. Let's say magnesium. Magnesium bromide. Okay, so if I'm going to name magnesium bromide, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the name or write the symbol write the symbol, and then write the charges. So therefore I'm going to put a minus here, two plus here. How do I know that? Go back to my periodic table. Magnesium's here, bromine or bromide is going to be here. Okay, so minus one charge. All right, so now that I've established that, all I need to do now is I have to balance the charges. So I have to make sure that these two are, are balanced when they form because ionic compounds have to be neutral. So therefore, to do that, I need to have at least two bromide charges, don't I? This adds up to 2 plus. This now adds up to 2 minus. So therefore, when they come together, what I need to do is I need to write how many of each ions. So magnesium, I need one of. And my bromide, I need two. So here's my final formula for magnesium bromide. I just have to balance the charges. Let's do that again. Let's say that I look at something like uh, aluminum. Notice that the ID endings tell us that we have um, charges that are, you know, we have a compound. The ID ending tells you that this is in a compound. So aluminum fluoride is a compound because of the ID ending. So I write aluminum and I write fluoride. I look up the charges. I'm not going to do it again because I know what they are. 3 plus for aluminum, 1 minus for fluoride. So how many fluorides do you think I need to balance with the aluminum? I'm going to need 3 of those fluorides. And I have a balanced compound. This is a neutral compound. There's, the charges are still there. Don't, don't get misled here. The charges are still there. There are just enough of them that they kind of balance each other out. So I pulled one of those fluorides out, then it would be out of balance. So this compound is neutral. So ionic compounds are neutral compounds. Okay? All right. Uh, one last thing is how do we go from the formula to the name? Oops, my fault. Wrong one. Get rid of that. Get rid of this. So if I have the formula is, let's say, C-A-S. Um, 
Okay, or let's say that the formula is um, BaCl2. All right, so all I'm going to do here is I'm going to write the name calcium, and I write the name sulf, and then I get IDE, sulfide. Barium, and I would just do chloride. That's it. That's all you do for naming and formula writing. You can just make sure when you're writing the formulas that you balance the charges. When you're writing the names, you just translate the names. Okay. Now this is as simple as they get. In the next lesson, I'll show you a little bit more complicated ones. I'll show you those multiple charged ions because I'm running out of time here. So we'll focus on multiple charged ions and how they are used in what we do to um, name and formula write with them. So thanks a lot.